Okay, so what we will do um, is we will try and do a concise demonstration of what we stated about uh, localization without GPS. Okay, uh, I'll make one assumption only. Allow me to make that one assumption that uh, take an example of a vehicle um, which is entering either a thick uh, tree cover or a tunnel or some position you will find many spots like that where there is no GPS. Okay. However, the last GPS coordinate was somehow recorded. There was a last GPS point somehow which got recorded. It is not a bad assumption because uh, as you move you will find that suddenly you will lose GPS and then suddenly you will get it back. So, the last GPS point was available to you. It is a reasonable assumption. Let us use that as the starting uh, point and then I will run through a set of uh, a small slide deck which we prepared for this course and um, then we will go to the demo come back and then have a look at uh, we we'll summarize the whole thing. Okay. So, let me turn your attention to this slide deck here. So, this is what we want to do you this is your starting point which is essentially the uh, point where uh, the last GPS coordinate was available. Okay. The last GPS coordinate was available and the vehicle uh, was has started to move in this direction. Okay, it is moving in this direction, and this is the point where the first read occurred. And from here, the vehicle is moving. Okay, now let us see what you want to do. In the absence of GPS, you want to identify the location of the vehicle. You want to track the vehicle route. This is another important thing you want to do. You want to track the vehicle route. You want to calculate the distance travelled by the vehicle from the starting point and you want to project the path taken by the vehicle onto a map. This is great right. If you are able to if you have a static map with you and you are able to project the path taken by the vehicle on such a map your job is done. You essentially know in real time where the vehicle is uh, at a given instant in time. So, I hope this problem statement is uh, clear to you and these are what these are the things activities that you want to do when you do not have GPS. Now, what are those sensors that you want to use in order to get to that? It will be great if you get a speedometer or access to the speedometer of the vehicle. In fact, not just the speedometer, but the odometer, right? The one that gives you the distance directly from a vehicle. We can handle this separately when we do the automotive part. Actually, if you go back and look at the automotive uh, systems, there is the onboard diagnostics uh, connector available in all vehicles manufactured after 1996. Okay, it's called OBD2. Okay, the OBD2 will give you for sure one of the ECUs, the electronic control units, uh, will give you the speed, no problem. Okay, so from that speed, you should be able to directly. Uh, know how much linear uh, how much distance you have you have traveled that is ok. Uh, in fact, that will uh, as uh, we were discussing maybe you do not want speed, but you are interested in ri directly reading the odometer which is a direct indication of how much distance the vehicle has moved because speed will involve uh, integration and integration errors and all that. So, uh, what you uh, what I would be the best thing would be to directly read the odometer. Okay, so, assume that you do not have a speedometer, but you need equivalent of what we call a speedometer to be in place. All right. Let us see how we do that. Supposing you did not have access to a, uh, access to, access to a speedometer because um, uh, saying OBD2 is all good if it is a four wheeler. What will you do if you are on a two wheeler? There is nothing equivalent of an OBD2 for a two wheeler. So, it is still good to construct from basic principles a simple speedometer. And uh, for that as I mentioned to you uh, we will be we will try and use a hall sensor and a magnet. Okay. The hall sensor will be connected to the frame and then there will be a magnet connected to the rim and each time the magnet crosses the hall sensor a pulse is generated and those pulses uh, by you when you start counting pulses you know how many rotations and based on that you know how much distance. So, very simple speedometer very reliable uh, system. Um, of course, you can have a pulse uh, you can you can be missing pulses if you do not mount it properly. Anyway, we will come to that. So, those issues can come. So, we will construct that very simple uh, speedometer 
and from there uh, we will use magnetometer for all the turnings and barometer if you are climbing any uh, hill or anything uh, which is over 10 15 uh, feet. So, that there can be a change in the pressure and that pressure indication can again come back onto the map and somehow you will be able to put it uh, you will be able to combine everything. But for the moment we will not worry about barometer uh, we will again take this up as a separate module we will just concentrate on speedometer and magnetometer as primary sensors to calculate the distance and direction. Okay. Now, this is important process data what happens if you do not process the data I will show you something which will be then be uh, superimposed on the Google map. Okay. Now, as the vehicle is going under a thick tree cover or somewhere if there is let us say a signal a GSM signal a wayside a way GSM signal coming uh, or if there is a free Wi-Fi somewhere you may want to argument that uh, those signals also to improve your location accuracy. So, you must think out of the box try and see how can I argument and improve the accuracy by simply taking those free Wi-Fi signals which are available on the wayside or GSM signals coming from the nearest tower they will use them as basically use them as secondary attributes and improve the loc uh, location accuracy. So, this is what you should try and attempt to do uh, yourself if you are planning to uh, build a localization system without any GPS. Now, what we have is for the demo we have uh, two primary sensors I mentioned to you hall sensor for distance measurement magnetometer for any turning on the roads. Okay. If you have any turning you can use uh, uh, you can use that and it is purely two dimensional at the moment we are not looking at any height related information and this is very important assumption to make at the moment it is just purely two dimensional. See the idea also is that this is not going to solve uh, you know removal of GPS you cannot be saying I will throw away GPS that is not the way. In situations where you do not have GPS for short durations for very constrained environments for certain very specific requirements you may want to rely on this kind of techniques. That is why we are doing this uh, IOT course uh, related to localization it is not that it is going to replace high technologies it is that is not going to work. Okay. But this is a simple technology which can work over uh, uh, over points where GPS does not work right. So, that is how we started everything. So, let us see a hall sensor placed on the bike fork. So, we actually used a two wheeler so that this OBD2 problem can be avoided okay, because we do not have access to the OBD2. Uh, magnet is placed on the uh, wheel spokes and there is a magnetometer which is part of the hardware uh, controller it is essentially an Arduino board placed on the uh, on the bikes uh, dashboard somewhere you have some place and then you install it there. Sensor data is basically collected by the microcontroller will be stored in real time uh, in an edge computing device and then the process data will be superimposed on an offline map as a marker okay, as a as marker alright. So, that is the key thing here. Let us see what are the possibilities for you to choose magnetometer sensor. Recall the first session of this uh, design for IoT course which we did the previous module whenever you talk about design you talk about design choices okay there are several choices that you have to make which one will you choose here you have two magnetometer sensors you have mpu 9250 is a 9 degree of freedom uh, magnetometer and there is a mag 3110 from nxp uh, so there and if you look at the interfaces the resolution and all that um, it appears that they are both may be suitable uh, the MPU is uh, cheaper actually it is 800 uh, rupees as compared to 1720 uh, which is from the MAG uh, system and compatibility is there with Arduino both do have compatibility this is much higher uh, you know uh, output data rate as compared to a lower data rate which is from MAG and so on. So, essentially you will have to do some sort of comparison before you arrive at any uh, specific uh, uh, any specific uh, uh, magnetometer for your applications. Okay. Uh, essentially this mag uh, is integrated in smartphones personal navigation devices and all that and this MPU 9250 is for uh, magnetic heading applications tilt compensation electronic compass for map rotation and all that. So, 
you can see that we looked at both of them and uh, we tried to see which one will be the most uh, suitable one. Now, data logging from uh, the Hall sensor as you can see this is the Hall sensor that we have used A3144E e is the Hall sensor and it is directly giving you the distance in meters as the pulse as the pulses keep coming you will see that uh, it is uh, showing you the distance 3.14, 6.28, 9.42 uh, units of 3.14 is essentially getting repeated and it is coming out very nicely here that the distance is coming. So, RPM measurement is based on difference in time scale between the two successive events change in magnetic field experienced by the Hall sensor essentially is that is what we are saying. The RPM value will be calculated each time there is a change in the magnetic field experienced by the sensor quite straightforward and then you see that you are actually able to convert those pulses periodic pulses that you are getting into distance in uh, meters. So, that is already a nice uh, takeaway. So, you are getting some distances already alright. So, then data logging from magnetometer uh, you will see that uh, the micro tesla values are coming you will see that maximum is 800 micro tesla and uh, minimum is uh, some other number there is some resolution and um, you can also uh, essentially um, you know log the magnetometer uh, readings and uh, so on right. So, that is another uh, important thing. So, I mentioned to you that design choices have to be made and we found that um, the design choice essentially means that um, you have to uh, choose the right sensor for the right activity ok. And uh, you I have just put this slide to tell you that the mag 3110 was actually not so suitable for this application because there was no continuous variation of the data coming from the uh, mag the uh, magnetometer. Uh, the output also from the sensor was not matching with the actual distance uh, actual directional distance. So, we had some troubles with the magnetometer you may end up facing such issues. So, it is important for you to essentially ensure that you take care of uh, uh, those uh, issues uh, selecting the right magnetometer for your applications. Now, the magnetometer we finally settled down was the MPU 9250 please note that it is much cheaper then the other uh, magnetometer, uh, but somehow this seems to be doing the actual job and then uh, we are able to uh, log the data and uh, so it is giving you some micro tesla values and essentially showing you how the direction is uh, changing right. You will see some fluctuation in these numbers here 319, 301, 289 and all that I agree that there is some change um, even if the vehicle is going straight there seem to be some change in the uh, value of the um, uh, the uh, micro tesla readings coming from the magnetometer and this can pose a serious problem for you because you may not even be sure whether the vehicle is moving straight or whether it is tilting to some uh, to some direction because you will see 271 to 309 uh, look at this 2 to 228 to uh, 319 is uh, quite a uh, difference in micro tesla values. In reality you may not even have moved too much you may not have changed direction too much, but this kind of fluctuation you have to somehow be able to handle which essentially means and brings us to a very important point that you must process the data. So, this is the key takeaway from the uh, from this slide alright. Now, what is the next important activity essentially you have to map uh, whatever is available to you in terms of the uh, distances on some sort of a map which is a very standard thing like a Google map or something like that. So, essentially what we have to do is as I mentioned recall that we uh, started with uh, the uh, last uh, co GPS coordinate available to us. So, you actually know the lat long there right the latitude and the longitude is known to you. From that what you do is you essentially you, you hold that latitude and longitude you actually know the physical location from where you started. Then what you do you convert that uh, lat latitude and longitude into some form of two dimensional coordinate system which is called the UTM you can see here it is called the universal uh, transverse uh, marketer coordinate map. This is basically a map uh, which is uh, a it is a conformal projection which uses two dimensional Cartesian coordinate system and to give locations on the surface of the earth ok. So, if you want more information please look up the Wikipedia page 
it will tell you that uh, it is a nice way to sort of convert it into two dimensional form. Um, and essentially like the traditional method of latitude and longitude it is a horizontal position representation uh, that is it is uh, used to identify locations on the earth independently of vertical position right. So, that is why it is the actually it is a two dimensional system however it differs from that method in several respects but we will not get into the detail of that. So, you are somehow using this UTM coordinate map system which was helpful in imposing distance and angle information onto the map. So, please look up UTM which will help you to take whatever readings you are getting and pin it back onto the maps right. So, this is very very important because in real time you are getting the distances. When you get distances in real time you have to put it back onto the map right you have to you so that you are following the map accurately. So, what you do you take the initial lat latitude and longitude given by the GPS system you will convert you will have the two dimensional uh, um, values with you two dimensional data with you you are collecting distance and you are collecting the direction you take that and then map it back add it back to the initial value that you got then you get the new uh, distance and the new uh, direction and then put it back onto the map right that way you iterate between the map and the values that you are getting from your uh, system uh, and that is how you will be able to uh, sort of uh, track the uh, system. So, there are challenges though it is not without that you with just it will work straight away. The challenge is in integration of the sensor information on the map as I mentioned it is easy for me to say these things, but it is going to be difficult for you to when you actually do it and you have to do it. So, that you get some experience on it essentially the data from the sensors was highly scattered uh, the map markers were found to be scattered all around. So, you will have some difficulty there. The hall sensor is also uh, not going to give you uh, uh, you know all pulses. So, you will at times have problem of loss of pulses which means that uh, distance uh, error you will start getting because you lose one pulse you will lose some meters right and that distance measured will be incorrect. Also magnetometer I showed you that it was fluctuating you may actually be on a straight line, but uh, the tesla micro tesla values were fluctuating quite a bit. So, the magnetometer uh, in magnetometer the angle provided even on a straight road was found to be uh, deflecting. So, all these issues will come, but nevertheless you will see some very interesting uh, things right. It is not so bad uh, I am not uh, you should not get put off for the fact that um, uh, we have all these problems it is you will see some interesting results. This is path tracking with UTM distance uh, there is no lat long. So, you can see that we have converted the lat long information from the first slide into UTM distance again you get back this uh, two points that we had initially put. So, it is already very good it is putting back uh, in the two uh, di direction uh, two dimensional coordinate system it is putting back in the Cartesian coordinate system it is putting back these two initial uh, points right. But uh, if you do not process the data you can see that if you do not process the data what actually happens is you start from here and instead of going straight like this you start drifting away like this ok. This is the problem instead of going straight. So, if you process the data you will actually go straight no problem. So, um, if you look this is path tracking with unprocessed data this is another uh, example, but this is with two turns ok. The original path is it should go like this it should go like this this is one turn and then there is another turn here you can see this this is another turn this is one turn. So, I will start here again straight turn once turn twice turn twice turn twice this is what it should have happened, but you can see that these markers are thrown all over the place um, inside the IAC campus as you can see there are lot of uh, known uh, uh, locations for people who are familiar with the campus, but if you process nicely you get one turn and you will get almost another turn although it did not turn accurately at that point it turned all right. So, you can see that this kind of uh, path tracking with process data is definitely a very good possibility. So, that is all I have for the moment let us look at the demonstration of this and then come back and then uh, uh, summarize this whole uh, localization without uh, GPS and then uh, we will see how we can go on to other topics. 
Okay, so let's start the demonstration. This is the microcontroller which is powered, you can see this cable here is powered through this USB uh, and uh, it's connected to this uh, laptop and to this Arduino board we have interfaced a magnetometer, okay. So the, this is a magnetometer board. Now this essentially will give you the turns and uh, direction change and all of that will come from this. Now how do you do wheel counting rotations? You can see here this is a hall sensor and uh, to this hall sensor is uh, which is fixed on the frame right this is fixed to this frame here now what we will show you is uh, there is a magnet which is connected here right there's a magnet here and each time the magnet uh, you can see a beep here you can see a signal here you can see that light there so every time this magnet comes close to this hall sensor board um, the uh, there is a pulse which is counted and these pulses are essentially counted um, and uh, you know you process the data from the uh, both from the direction um, as well as from the wheel uh, pulses coming from the hall sensor use both of them and put it on top of the map after data process suitable data processing and then you should be able to localize this two-wheeler on a given path. Thank you.